Good day everyone. I am Captain Ron Irani and very soon I will be taking a class. But before I begin a class, I have a social message for every one of you. Please do wear a mask at all times. Please wash your hands frequently. Please avoid crowded areas. Please stay at least two meters away from others and most importantly, get yourself and your family members vaccinated. It definitely works in controlling the spread of the coronavirus. At the end of the class, do give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel as well as Click on the bell icon to get instant notifications as soon as something new is posted on my channel. In this video, I will be taking you through the definitions of harbor, port and port facility. I will also be telling you about GISIS. The full form is Global Integrated Shipping Information System. It is from the IMO. My name is Captain Ron Irani and welcome to my class. What is the definition of a harbor? It is a body of water along the shore deep enough for anchoring a ship and it is so situated with respect to coastal features, be it natural, be it an artificial harbor, so as to provide ships protection from winds, waves and currents. The harbor that I am going to talk about in this class is the harbor of Mumbai. This is a screenshot from Google Maps. Here you have Kolaba, the southernmost tip of the city of Mumbai. To the east you have Uran and to the southeast you have Manwe and Awas. This area over here is typically called Mumbai Outer Anchorage and it is the entrance into the Mumbai Harbour. What you see on this slide now is the actual harbour of Mumbai. Inside this harbour you have got two distinct ports. One is here, the port of Mumbai which is controlled by the Mumbai Port Trust. And there is another port over here, the Navasheva port which is controlled by the Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust, in short also called JNPT. This Mumbai Harbour has, has got an inner anchorage which gives protection to ships, big and small, against bad weather, strong currents. Now what is a port? It is a city, town or an anchorage where ships load or unload cargoes, fuel, water and passengers. It is any place where persons and merchandise are allowed to pass by land or water into and out of a country and where customs officers are stationed to inspect or appraise imported goods. So once again, let's go back to the port of Mumbai. As I told you earlier, there are two ports within Mumbai Harbour. One is the port of Mumbai, Mumbai port. It contains all these port facilities. And across the bay, 
is the port of Navasheva controlled by the Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust. The Mumbai port is controlled by the Mumbai Port Trust. Definitions as in the ISPS code for port facility. A port facility is a location as determined by the contracting government or by the designated authority where the ship port interface takes place. This includes areas such as anchorages, waiting berths and approaches from seaward as appropriate as I showed you in the very first picture, the Mumbai port has got anchorages where the ships wait at anchorage. It is also possible that discharging and loading operations take place, bunkering operations take place, crew change and passenger change operations also take place. Basically, a port facility is any berth, anchorage, approaches, area where you have got a ship port interface. Now, what is the ship port interface as per the ISPS code? It means the interaction that occurs when a ship is directly and immediately affected by the actions involving the movement of persons, goods or provisions of port services to or from the ship. Another definition of port facility, it is from another source. It is a wharf, a pier, breakwater, terminal, warehouse or other building or work located in, on or adjacent to navigable waters used in connection with navigation or shipping and includes all land incidental to their use. Now I have been asked why I, why I have specifically taken up this topic in this class is because I have been asked, Sir, isn't supply of water, supply of fuel, Hospitals, doctors, police, don't they count as port facilities? Now the supply of fuel and water definitely would count as port facility if it is supplied to at anchorage. But hospitals, doctors, police, etc. don't count as port facilities in any form or manner. The port facility is basically an anchorage area, a port designated, any area that is designated for a ship shore interface to receive cargo, to discharge cargo, to receive stores, fuel, fresh water, change of passengers and crew of course. Now, some of the port facilities within the Mumbai port is divided into three, uh, three sections, I'm sorry. The one on the left starts from Kushal Nagar in the north goes down to Wadi Bandar and of course it goes still further down into Princess Dock, Victoria Dock and it goes still further down to the Sasun Dock local fish market. This here is the ferry wharf and this section over here is the fish market at ferry wharf. Other port facilities further south of Alexandria and Princess Docks are the Indira Docks. Earlier they were called the Alexandria Dock. 
This stretch of blue over here is the entrance into the Indira docks via a lock gate and this stretch of blue here is the dry dock. This one here is a terminal that was built not very long ago for car carriers. On the outer wall over here, Indira docks, ship's berth. Here is another dock where ships also berth. Some of the port facilities within the Navasheva port, which is just across the bay from the Mumbai port. Here you have the container berths. You have you can take in, which can take in about six ships. And then here are the berths for some smaller ships, smaller craft. I have also included photographs from Google Maps for Chennai and Paradi ports. While Mumbai is actually a harbour and inside that you have two ports. But Chennai port is not a harbour. It is a port that is protected by the breakwaters. It does not provide access or safe uh, anchorages for ships in case of bad weather. It has got berths for containers for coal cargo, etc., general cargo, etc. On the right hand side you have the Paradip port, also a small port protected by breakwaters. Any ships which want to anchor have to anchor outside, outside, outside Paradip as, Paradip as well as outside Chennai. Chennai. There is no provision for sort of an inner anchorage. So these, in general, are called port facilities. They have cargo berths, container berths, iron ore berth, coal berth, passenger berth, anchorages, fishing terminals, passenger terminals. At Mumbai, you have got the Butcher Island, which can take in tankers. And then there is a special coal berth for the power station. Here is another port, the Tutikorin port and its port facilities. So basically what I am trying to get at is that the port facilities that students tell us, that police, hospitals, Outside the port, then of course the supply of water, supply of uh, bunkers, fuel, stores, our port facilities is wrong. The port facility that is coming under the ISPS code, remember one thing, IMO has nothing to do with the police, the hospitals, security, arrange, uh, security companies. Supply the suppliers of fuel and water, suppliers of stores and spares. IMO has nothing to do with that. IMO will only be concerned wherever the ship shore interface takes place. What happens at anchorages? Mumbai inner anchorage, cargo is loaded and discharged. Supplies of fuel and fresh water also take place. Exchange of passengers take place. Now I will take you to what is happening in Singapore, the port facilities of Singapore from this website.
as you see over here, Singapore anchorages, they are under one port facility security officer who is the port master, his contact details, his telephone number where he is available 24-7. Then there is the PSA Corporation which controls Brani Terminal, Keppel Terminal, Tanchong Paga Terminal and this here is the list of all the PFSOs for the PSA Corporation controlling Brani Terminal, Keppel Terminal and the Tanchong Paga Terminal and these are their contact numbers. So basically Every port facility must have a port facility security officer and his assistance if required and their contact details too. The entire port of Singapore is not a port facility. There are many individual port facility owners and they have their own port facility single, uh, port facility security officers. Now here is another port facility controlled by the PSA corporation that is the Panj Pasir Panjang container terminal. Now if you look the owners are the same and therefore the port facility security officers are also the same. Their contact numbers, if you will see, are also the same. Here is another PSA corporation, Simbawang Wharfs. William Lai figures over here. He is the Port Facility Security Officer for the Pasir Panjang Container Terminal as well as for the Brani, Keppel and the Tanjung Paga Terminals. Same is the case with with S. Anpalagan. He is here as well as here. And you see their contact numbers are the same. Now Singapore, just like Mumbai port, has got many port facilities. But the only difference is all the port facilities within the Mumbai port are owned by one company which is the Mumbai Port Trust and all the port facilities in the JNPT, the Jawala Nehru port is owned by one company that is the Jawala Nehru Port Trust. Hence, they have got one port facility security officer for all the berths. Mumbai Port has its own port facility security officer and the JNPT port has its own port facility security officer. But here as you see in Singapore, there are so many port facilities and each one of them have their own independent port facility security officers. Another thing, another thing to note here is Keppel Shipyard. Okay, it is one owner. Keppel Shipyard, Keppel Fells, again Keppel Shipyard, Keppel Shipyard and if you see their port facility security officers are the same. Going back, let's, let's see what, what Hong Kong, Kong tells us. us. Here is the list of all the port facilities within the port of Hong Kong. They are owned individually. So each one of them has a port facility security officer. Modern Terminals Limited are the owners of these three berths. Hong Kong International Terminals are the owners of this, these four berths. So they would very likely have the same set of port facility security officers across all these berths. 
Now if you see container terminal 1, container terminal 2, then there is container terminal 4, then there is container terminal 5, then 6, 7, 9. They are along the same waterfront, but the owners are different. So would Modern Terminals Limited and Hong Kong Terminals Limited allow traffic to pass through? Answer will be no. Because each one will have their own port facility security assessment, port facility security plan and they cannot overlap. They have to be, they have to be independent of each other. Going down, what does it tell you? Detailed information of the above ISPS compliant port facilities are listed in the IMO Global Integrated Shipping Information System, that is GISIS, which is what I'm going to talk about next. So let me take you to the GISIS website. It comes under IMO. Now there are two areas. One is open to the public. You and me, general public. You don't even have to be a seafarer. You just have to be interested in knowing things about shipping. And then of course, this public area is free, but the information available to the public is very limited. Then of course there is the other area where you have to pay for subscription and the information available there will be much more than what is available in the public area. And since we are talking about maritime security, let me take you there. I have registered myself in the public area and I am going to type in my password and it will take me into my account. So you see this is my account Ron underscore faculty. I have to choose the name of the country which I need to find information on. Let us take Singapore. If I know the IMO UN number, I can easily punch that in and come directly there or I can write Singapore. I would like to have the organizational contacts in the port of Singapore. There are six tick boxes whose information I can get. And all this, as I told you earlier, is available to anyone in the public domain. Here you see, you have the national authorities responsible for ship security under SOLAS regulation 11-2-1311, which is the maritime and port authority of Singapore. National authorities responsible for port facility security under this SOLAS regulation, again maritime and port authority of Singapore. Likewise, Recipients of ship to show security alerts, Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore. In short, they are called MPA Singapore. Recipients of maritime security related communications from other contracting governments under SOLAS regulation so and so, MPA Singapore. Recipients of requests for advice or assistance to Ships and to whom ships can report security concerns under SOLAS Regulation 
1315 again MPS Singapore now here you see are the entire list of recognized security organizations and their names are given over here and this is one set of information that is available going back Let us see port facilities. I will choose list all port facilities at all the ports. At the very top you have the port facilities which are cancelled which perhaps are no more in existence and they have withdrawn their port facility security officers, their data etc. Then come two of them which are closed and then comes one which is withdrawn for whatever their reasons and thereafter comes the whole list of existing port facilities where ship shore interface can take place. Let us go to one any one port facility at random. PSAC which we saw earlier which was downloaded by me directly from the Port of Singapore website Brani Terminal, Keppel Terminal, Tanjung Paga Terminal. Let us take that up and view details. port name Singapore and UN locator code is SGSIN port facility names Brani terminal, Keppel terminal, Tanjung Paga terminal IMO port facility number SGSIN 0009 and what sort of facility what sort of service does this facility provide Provides port services and facilities for handling, storage and transportation of goods including containerized cargo. Its position, latitude and longitude is given. And then of course comes information about its security plan. When was the, what was the date of the port facility security plan approval? 2009, May the 12th. Date of most recent review or approval of the Port Facility Security Plan 2019 June 30th Date of the most recently issued statement of compliance if applicable 2019 June 30th Now coming to the maritime security points of contact These are the Port Facility Security Officers The first on the list, S. An Anpalagan. Let us see if he figures over here. S. Anpalagan. So, their information is prompt and up to date on the IMO website. What are the telephone numbers given to, given in, over here? 67716537 and what is the information that you can get from IMO website 67716237 okay maybe there is some change over here and then there are others Johan Johari do give a thumbs up do subscribe to my channel as well as click on the bell icon to get an instant indication for all new postings in my channel. Thank you and goodbye.